Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you all the best features of Oppo A96. By the way, I've already posted a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video as well, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone would be its performance. This phone sports a Snapdragon 680 processor with a Adreno 610 GPU. Purely in terms of performance, it can definitely satisfy a regular user and even if you are a heavy gamer, you'll really appreciate the performance. Next best thing about this phone would be its charging speeds. This phone actually comes with a massive 5000mAh battery, supports fast charging and also comes with a 33W SuperVoke charger inside the box. And the charging speeds are pretty impressive. You can almost charge your phone completely from 0 to 100% in just about an hour. You can easily get up to 80% of charge in about 30 to 40 minutes. Considering the battery size, that's definitely pretty impressive. Next best thing about this phone would be its display. This phone actually comes with a massive 6.59 inch IPS display with Full HD plus resolution and 90Hz screen refresh rate. Even though it's not an AMOLED display, it's still a pretty good IPS panel and that screen refresh rate is something that you'll definitely appreciate. Next we have Super Power Saver Mode. Once you enable this feature, your phone turns on dark mode, restricts performance, reduces battery usage and gives you few applications that you can use and also gives you the option to add few more apps. In this mode, phone's standby time increases drastically. By the way, we can still use internet in this mode. It does consume more battery, but it is definitely better than the regular mode. Next we have Eye Comfort Mode. It's just another name for the reading mode and once you enable it, it puts a warm tint on the screen to reduce the blue light emitted from the display. It also has the black and white mode where it turns the whole display black and white. We have a new navigation gesture called swipe from both sides. Now once you enable this feature, you can swipe from the bottom to go home, swipe and hold for recent tabs and finally swipe from the left side or right side to go back a step. These are the new swipe gestures even seen on Android 10 and it's already available on this phone. Now going on next, we have a super handy shortcut to trigger Google Assistant with the power button. Once you enable this feature, you can long press the power button to trigger Google Assistant. It's a nice feature and can be quite useful while using the navigation gestures. But I don't think this power button will last longer if you use it continuously. Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots on this phone. Well, there are mainly two ways. One is by using the buttons. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Next, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. Once enabled, you can just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. By default, this gesture is always enabled. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a long screenshot. First, take a screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. Once you have the preview of the screenshot, just swipe it down to take a long screenshot. If you have already opened the screenshot, you can click this button to take a longer screenshot. Next, we have partial screenshot. For this feature, we are going to use that three finger screenshot gesture in a different way. Once you enable this feature, you can just touch and hold the screen to take a partial screenshot. You just need to place the three fingers, then slide it slowly to take a partial screenshot. Now going on next, this phone even comes with screen recording. I really don't know why you want to record your screen, especially on an Android phone, but for some reason if you want to record it, you can start it from the notification toggles or you can also use the smart bar which can be accessed from anywhere by swiping on the right side corner. You can stop recording by clicking the stop button on the floating bubble. Next we have flash on call. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, flashlight on the phone blinks to give you an indication. This feature can be quite useful when your phone is in silent mode. Next we have a feature called vibrate when you answer an end call. Just like the name suggests, every time you answer a call or end a call, your phone vibrates. It's not a big feature but adds to the overall experience. Next we have a feature that identifies unknown numbers. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call from any unknown number, your phone will check its online database and try to find the contact name. This can be quite useful to check spam calls. Next, we have a feature called Screen On End Calls with Power Button. 
Once you enable this feature, you can end calls by pressing the power button when the display is on. When the display is off, clicking the power button just turns on the display. Next we have split screen mode. Now split screen mode has been on Android for a very long time, but on this phone, we have some more features. Now to start a split screen mode, as always, you can simply press and hold the recent apps button. Or on this phone, you can also use the three finger gesture, simply swipe up using three fingers to open the current application in a split screen mode. You can choose a secondary application from the list below. Personally, I like this gesture and I wish every other phone has it. Next, we have some screen off gestures like double tap to wake. Just enable it and double tap the screen to wake it up. Next, you can draw a note to open the camera application. We can also draw a V to toggle the torch. We can also draw characters like greater than or less than for music controls. And finally, you can add custom gestures like you can draw a W to open WhatsApp, M for phone dialer, and so on. Next we have raise to wake. Now once you enable this feature, you can simply raise your phone or pick it up from a table and your phone wakes up and then displays the lock screen. Next we have flip to mute incoming calls. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can flip your phone to silence an incoming call. Next we have digital well-being. Now this is a feature from Google that tracks all your usage on your phone and gives you a complete analysis of which apps you're using more and then helps you limit your usage and block notifications from those applications. Next we have wind down. This feature is part of digital well-being which can help you sleep faster at night. Using this feature, you can schedule your phone to turn on grayscale mode and do not disturb mode automatically at a specific time. Now going on next, this phone has a very unique feature called Smart Sidebar. It is enabled by default and this is how it looks like. You have some quick shortcuts, quick actions and some quick applications. You can access it from anywhere. Even while watching videos or playing games in full screen mode, you can swipe near the notch area to bring it up. From here you can quickly launch applications, take a screenshot, record the screen, block banner notifications and finally open few applications in a floating window. Next we have assistive ball. Now just in case if navigation gestures are not really your thing but you still want a much more immersive experience, you can enable assistive ball. Once you enable this feature, you'll see a floating bubble that can do multiple actions. Now first you need to select the operation mode. You have gestures and tap mode. I'll go with gestures. Now you can tap once to go back, double tap for multitasking and touch and hold to go home. If you select tap, once you click it, you just get additional options just like the iPhones and iPads. Now this is another way to interact with your phone and gives you a much more immersive experience. Next we have Startup Manager. Now just like the name suggests, it's a feature that allows you to stop applications from auto starting in the background. Now most of these applications automatically start in the background and then drain your battery life. And for the most part, just applications like maybe Instagram or WhatsApp needs to be allowed to auto start. So you can disable auto start permission for all these applications and further improve the battery life. Next, we have an app lock built into the system. And unlike most phones, we can unlock locked applications either by using the password or the fingerprint scanner and even by using the face unlock feature. So if you're already using face unlock feature on your phone, most of the time, you won't even see the lock screen. Now, because of this one particular feature, you can lock any application you want and you won't be inconvenienced in any way. Next, we have clone apps, which is a feature that allows you to use two instances of the same application. Like you can have two WhatsApp accounts, two Facebook accounts and two Instagram accounts on the same phone. This is definitely a very handy feature, but it is still limited to only very few applications. Let's say if I want to use two Paytm accounts on the same phone, we can't do that. Next we have private save. Now this feature is more like an application or like a vault where you can hide all kinds of files. Just like the app lock, we can have a completely different password from your lock screen and we can unlock it using your fingerprint or your facial data. Personally, I suggest you to use Gallery Vault. Next we have Automatic On Off. Now this is another weird name for Schedule Power On and Power Off and using these settings, we can automatically turn on and turn off your phone at a specific time. 
Next we have kid space. If your kid is troubling you about your phone, he wants to play some games or maybe sometimes he accidentally purchases stuff, kid space can be quite useful for you. Once you configure this kid space, your kid will be able to only use specific applications that you choose and he will be able to use your phone only for a specific amount of time. Once again, it's a nice feature, but if your kid already knows your password, it's completely useless. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and make sure you check out my video on tips and tricks section, link will be in the description. Now if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off, have a nice day.